Hi everyone, um, and thank you for joining us for our first ever Shut Down But Scratching. Um, my name's Jen, um, I'm one of the co-artistic directors of Shoot Festival. So in partnership with Coventry City of Culture Trust and the Belgrade Theatre, we are delighted to present to you this evening 10 local artists who really show the breadth and depth of creativity in Coventry and Warwickshire. So, a little bit about us before the evening begins. Um, Shoot was founded in 2014 um, by myself and Paul O'Donnell. Since then, we've curated four festivals and platformed 73 artists from Coventry and Warwickshire. This evening's Scratch Night is our rapid response to the current crisis we are all facing. We want to find, support and celebrate independent artists in Coventry and Warwickshire. Tonight is a brand new venture for us. We have never done anything like this before. Um, it's all been a bit of an experiment, um, but we really hope you do enjoy it. Um, please also remember that this is a scratch night um, and the artists have been really have been working really hard to make their work this evening, um, but they've only had a week to make it a week. So, you know, please do show your appreciation for them because they've worked so, so hard. Um, this evening's work we have for this evening, we've asked artists to respond to the theme Imagine. So all of their work in some way or another will respond to the theme Imagine. Um, so yeah, we hope you enjoy. Please tell us what you think. If you um, don't enjoy it, maybe don't tell us. Um, but the, the hashtag you can get us on is hashtag shut down but scratching. And you can find us on Twitter at, at shoot festival or Facebook is slash cov shoot festival or we're also on Instagram, which is also um, shoot festival. So please do tell us what you think. Enjoy. Um, so first up for this evening, we have got Koye Sachs with the African Dream. Koye is a Nigerian um, saxophonist currently studying electrical and electronics engineering at the University of Warwick. Um, and a little bit about his piece. Africa has long been a continent bound up by the dominance and influence of other acting powers. Using his saxophone and storytelling, Koye asks us to imagine an Africa that has freedom. Imagine an Africa that has liberty. Imagine an Africa that is prosperous and powerful. Here's Koye. Africa is 
think words that have been taken out of our and extortion. African African men are trying to change the world. Don't stand my papa. How many of you are trying? I know. Religion. And that's what is wrong. Come on. The hope of other minerals. Our enemy is our enemy. And it stands ready to pounce upon and expose. Remember, always, that you have four digits to me. One. The attainment of freedom and independence. Second, the consolidation of that freedom and independence. Thirdly, the creation of a unity and community between the three African states. Fourth, the economic and social reconstruction of Africa. Long 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 long. Hey! If you know you are feeling this spirit right, let me hear you say, yeah, hey, yeah. About ten years ago, I spoke about an Africa, an Africa of hope and opportunity, an Africa of entrepreneurs, an Africa very different from the Africa that we normally hear about of death poverty and diseases. And that, what I spoke about became part of what is known now as the narrative of the rising, rising Africa. Africa. We have genius in our young people. I see it every day. It's what makes me wake up in the morning and feel ready to go. We have to unleash the genius of our young people. Get out of their way, support them to create and innovate and lead the way. And I know that they'll lead us in the right direction. And our women and our girls. We have to recognize that girls and women are a gift. They have strength. And we have to unleash that strength so that they can contribute to the continent. I strongly believe that when you, we do all of these things, we swim that the rising Africa narrative is not a fluke. It's, it's a trend. A trend. It is it's a trend. A trend. <laughs> and if we continue, if we unleash our youth, if we unleash our women, we may step backwards. We may not step sideways. But the trend is clear. Africa, Africa will continue to rise. Thank you. 
Great, thank you so much, Koye. Everyone give him a round of applause. I know you're all there, sat drinking your gin, watching this. Please do let our artists know if you're enjoying this evening. Um, it is quite strange speaking to an audience that isn't right in front of us. So yes, please do let them know that you are watching and enjoying. Okay, I have a few other shout outs to give this evening. Um, we'd like to thank the lovely Wes Finch, another Co Coventry artist um, who has been providing the original music during our scene changes this evening. Um, so big shout out to Wes, thank you so much. Um, this evening, we're bringing you these fantastic 10 artists um, completely free, um, but, I should let you know that Shoot Festival is a not-for-profit organization. We don't receive any core funding. Um, so if you do feel inclined to donate, then there's gonna be a link coming up on the YouTube um, chat and also um, during the interval as well to our PayPal account where you um, can donate if you feel so inclined. Um, all of the funds we raise this evening will go straight back into the projects to support more emerging artists. Right, next up, we have Lisa Franklin with The Wild Places. Lisa is a theatre maker, live artist, food grower and poet. The piece explores the relationship between nature and isolation imagining what it might be if nature was inaccessible to us in a future world versus if humans weren't present and were unable to interact with nature. Using spoken word, soundscape and projections of animation, The Wild Places looks at isolation from the viewpoint of the outside natural world. So Lisa Franklin is up next. What would the world be once bereft of wet and wildness? Let them be left. Or oh, let them be left, wildness and wet. Long live the weeds and the wilderness yet.
What would she be, once bereft of wildness and wet? Let her be left. Oh, please, let her be left with days filled with weeds and the wilderness yet. I'm confused. Was it you? Bombus Lapidarius at the window. It was just a passing moment, so I don't know. I heard you before I saw you, going like a tiny mower, butting against the pane, unafraid to venture closer, to touch. If it was you, you looked busy. I wasn't, truth to tell. I remember your fire-tipped bum poking out of a foxglove bell. one night in the wood, misty nights around the fire. He'd sent us off for logs and twigs, birch bark tinder peeled off with a knife, but things were looking dire. Which one's the silver birch, he said, and we all laughed and dispersed to forage through the woodland. Stay off the road please you two, he said. Stay away from other people and don't get seen. Lit in the blaze, the dark wood all around, you wafted away our fears by talking about the revered holy tree. Renewer, purifier. You hoisted us up into our treetop hung beds and cocooned us. In the morning, as the dawn came creeping around the edges, who should I see first but a patient platoon of those hardy silver white trunks all in line, ready for light.
Field fox, town fox, copper coat of rust, memories of a startled fox, shed roof still as stone, hidden by the yew tree, green eyes locked to mine, I see you, you see me. You live here, I, I come and go, you slink off somewhere safer. I burn a little, belly out, I feel I know you, red fur. Baby girl, save me one of those. Berry juice teeth marks with the sunshine warming my skin. A pick your own playground. And there are other children here too. Children that aren't quite my brothers or sisters, but children that share my mum and my days. Strawberry kisses, soil in my sandals, clouds in my hair. Before I knew better. Seeds piercing flesh, bites drawing red, sweet like, sweet like summers used to be. Baby girl, just one for planting. What would she be, once bereft of wildness, and, and yet that she is not? All around her are the wild places. She just had to look a little harder. Wow, Lisa, that was absolutely brilliant. So beautiful. I feel a lot calmer after watching that. Um, we're having some lovely tweets and Facebook posts. Please keep them coming. Although someone put a thumbs down on the YouTube link. Who was that? Can someone, can someone else just start putting some thumbs up, please? Thank you. Um, right, next we have um michael snodgrass um michael is a, a visual artist and um he's a resident artist in coventry interested in producing rich and evocative drawings with textural depth and contrast um, the very exciting thing about this piece is that it's actually not been made yet um, so Michael's piece is called I imagine we are meeting but can only reach each other by sight or sound because we are apart at height and we need you that's all you lovely viewers um, to help us finish the piece um, he's going to be creating a black and white line drawing um, depicting local people from Coventry and Warwickshire atop ladders unable to reach each other 
Um, the piece will investigate how we are currently connecting and the fact that we are near but not allowed close. Here is a short video starring Michael to tell you more about how to get involved. My name is Michael Snodgrass, also known as Snod, and I'm a visual artist and storyteller. I specialise in black and white illustration, depicting characters in dystopian worlds. Using pen and ink, I explore the use of line, light and shadow. I'd like to include you in my next picture. So what I need from you is photos of you trying to communicate from afar with your nearest and dearest in these strange times we find ourselves in. And I'd like you to be inventive and imaginative and hashtag them with Cov Connects and they'll get to me and I'll see if I can use them in my picture. Hi Michael, Paul here from Shoot Festival. Just wondering if you managed to get round to making that call out video that we spoke about yesterday. Yes, Paul. I'm just telling them about the picture and how they can get involved. All right. Fab. Thanks, Michael. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye. Send images or videos of you creatively communicating from a distance to at Shoot Festival on Twitter and Instagram or Cov Shoot Festival on Facebook using the hashtag CovConnect. You have until the end of the day on Sunday the 19th of April to submit your images and Michael's artwork will be released on our channels on Friday the 24th of April. Thanks. Bye bye now. Ta-da. Bye now. Bye. Great, that, that was awesome. Of course, Paul had to have a little uh, solo spot in the scratch night somewhere. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. We're so excited to see your um, drawing. And everyone, please don't forget to send in your photos of your creative ways of social distancing. Um, you will be um, drawn into Michael's lovely piece of work. Um, okay, so we're going to be moving on to the next act. We've got a bit more music for you. So um, next up we have Luke Petanuzzo um, with Acoustic Dreamscape. Luke will be performing his um, solo composition on guitar this evening. The piece has been developed around a series of themes so that you can imagine yourself in different surroundings. So if you're not enjoying who you're isolating with at the moment, maybe this will take you somewhere different. Um, Luke's practice is very much influenced by the French composer Eric Satie. Or Sarté. Um, great, I'll hand over to Luke.
Oh, I feel I feel very relaxed. <laughs> Thank you so much, Luke. That was beautiful. Um, and it was a totally original composition as well. Um, don't forget to check out all these artists, their Twitter pages, um, band camps, um, Facebook. Um, yeah, they're all local and they're all emerging. So please do follow them. Right, next we have um, Angela Malanga with Folktale. Angela is an actor, producer, writer and storyteller. And this piece um, draws inspiration from a traditional African folktale that has been passed down for generations. Angela's folktale is now made for this new age to be shared in every home. Forget about the confinement of four walls. Let's be free like butterflies gliding through the breeze. Here's Angela. In a beautiful small village right in the center of Africa was a little girl called Laleti. Laleti loved to sing and she'd sing for all the birds and the bees and the skies and the trees and all the village. She'd sing to her heart's content but she made a little deal with her parents. If she were to ever sing it would have to be outside where everyone could hear her. La, 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 I never said she was any good, but still, she gets an A for effort. La, 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 la. Hello, Mr. Crocodile, please don't bite. Wait for supper tonight. Hello, Mr. Cheetah. Oh, I mean, gorilla, uh, baboon, chimpanzee. What are you? Anyway, never mind. Hello, Mr. Giraffe. What a beautiful day we're having today. Wow, look at your neck. Wow, your neck is longer than my whole body. Uh, Mr. Giraffe, can you help me up that tree? Ooh. 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 Hello, everyone. Hello, Sun. Whoa, Mr. Sun, you're awful hot today. Sky is blue. Clouds are white. And I love blue and white, I do, because when I see the <laughs> cried the old man of the village, <laughs> you, you up there that tree, get down this instant, whoop, uh, hello. Hello, get down the letty right now. Sorry, Uncle. Woo. Thank you, Mr. Giraffe. Thank you, Mr. Baboon Monkey Gorilla, um, whatever you are. Uh, woo. Sorry, Mr. Crocodile. Oh, please don't bite. Remember, we made a deal. I am not your meal. We are friends. Hello, Uncle. Um, how are you today? It's such a beautiful and lovely and sunny day, don't you think? It's so beautiful. How are you? La Letty. How many times are we going to keep having this conversation? I am an old man. I need to take my daily rest. I can't sleep with you bleating about every single day. So please keep it down. Oh, Uncle, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. I was just trying to see. You see, my papa says that I have the voice of a songbird. Yes a songbird stuck in a nest full of thorns. Please stop screeching. Please keep it down whilst I try and sleep. Okay, uncle, I'll keep it down. Stop it. I'll keep it down. I'll keep it down, uncle. 
la 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 oh and laletti did try for the life of her to keep her down but oh the time just seemed to grow slower and slower then she thought to herself light bulb moment hmm what does mommy do when she's restless and trying to get to sleep she knows mommy sings her a lullaby and I'm sure uncle would appreciate that too. La 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 bye. But this time it was different. The more she went to open her mouth, the better she sounded. La 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 bye. Uncle, uncle, gives a little lullaby. Here's to help you sleep at night. Rest, Uncle, rest. La, 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 bye. Oh, that was a new note. Then she got a bit carried away. La, 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 bye. Ooh, back to square one. Well, still having a bit of fun. La, 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 la. Hey, get down from there right now. Ooh. Hello, Uncle. Did you have a nice nap? How are you? You look rested and lovely. Listen, Annette, please keep it down. How many times am I supposed to tell you? Every day you come out here, you make so much noise for the rest of us. Please stop singing. You know, not everyone is good at everything. Why don't you try and find a more silent hobby? Oh, Uncle, you're so funny. Listen. This is the last time I'm coming out of here, okay? Keep it down. I'm not going to tell you another time. All right? Oh, okay. Uncle resides back into his house to try it again and sleep. And Laletti starts to think to herself, well, she was getting better the more and more she tried. So maybe if she just hums and sings this time. Mm hmm. She cannot help herself. I do. And this time around, the villagers gather around and cheer her on. We want more. We want more. Woo! Go, Laletti, go. And she looks down, shocked and surprised, but she's happy. And I love blue and white. I do. And then from a distance, she hears the soft snores of a once grumbling old man. <sighs> and Laletti thinks to herself, oh, my lullaby worked. I do because when I see the lovely sky, I dream. I will not stop singing. And the Letty sang every day for all the villagers for all the days to come and brought so many smiles and joy to everyone around. Thank you for listening to the story. Bye. Wow, that was great. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, that's really brought a smile to my face. Um, and I hope it's cheered you lot up at home as well. Um, right, next, we have an interval. <gasps> I know, I think um, I might need a small beverage. Um, so next up, we've got a really short interval um, of five minutes. Now that's a hard five minutes, guys. There's even a countdown um, for you to top up those drinks. Um, and have a bit of a comfort break. And then we'll be back with the second half of Shut Down But Scratching. Um, in the meantime, we will leave you with um, Cold Hands, Heart, Warm Heart by Wes Finch um, uh, throughout the interval. And then when we come back, we will um, have a video um, from poet 
Nick Nib, also known as the Archbishop, who will be presenting three poems he has written during the lockdown. Okay, so go grab your wine or your non-alcoholic beverage and we'll see you in five.
This place is built of stronger stuff than bricks and mortar, iron and mud, and like a hand fits into glove, we know that we are here. And when we look on house in days, now that life has slipped out of phase, and something new is in its place, we know that we are here. Parallels drawn of darker nights, and flattened houses and firelit skies, always in our hearts and minds, we know that we are here. From black and white and sky blue blood, this is our neighborhood. And with a grace from up above, we know that we are here. And now we think it an oddity, when wealth not health is considered a commodity. And frozen like never before, we sit and watch TV. And the news from day to day blurs into one. Facts and figures run and run. And the skies grows quieter and the birds get louder as their glorious domain grows prouder and prouder. And a silent menace, one we can't see, as nurses searching for PPE. And the news on the radio gets worse and worse, and they try to persuade you to commit it to verse. And we spend all day in pyjamas and tees, and scream at the sound of Microsoft Teams. So I'll close my eyes and drift back in time, when the most important thing on my mind was packed into crates at record shops. And I dreamt of being on top of the pops. And the news commentary comes from room to room, in pixelated Skype or fuzzy Zoom. And you hope that it'll be over soon, before it reaches your door. This place is built of stronger stuff than bricks and mortar, iron and mud, and like a hand fits into glove, we know that we are here. And when we look on halcyon days, now that life has slipped out of phase, and something new is in its place, we know that we are here. Parallels drawn of darker nights and flattened houses and firelit skies, always in our hearts and minds, we know that we are here. From black and white and sky blue blood, this is our neighborhood. And with a grace from up above, we know that we are here. 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 here. say no. You should not be meeting family members who do not live in your house. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food and medicine. And you should do this as little as you can. And use food delivery services where you can. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the power to enforce them. I read the words countless times, round and round they sing in my head. I construct and deconstruct and look for more, and the mail that comes later and later, and in a way that anticipation makes it feel so much sweeter, so much greater. Every pause, every symbol is there for a reason, and I dissect each sentence for hidden meaning. But we read together, line after line, time after time.
the letters and words roll into the sea as the walls are broken down and I walk on the beach. I feel the pebbles cut into my feet and you are still just out of reach. And I smell the air and the scent of iris is always there tantalising and filling me up. And the waves that roll and crash we share apart. I close my eyes, the words hold and comfort like a well-worn Doc Martin boot, and the sweet fruit of remembrance brings you close, sitting on the clifftop looking down as the wind swirls round and the sunlight kisses our skin, our hands touch. There is always hope. There is always hope. There is always There is always hope. There is always hope. There is always Who'd have thought that the thing that would bring us together would be the same thing that was keeping us apart? There is always hope. We stood that evening and watched the sky as the space station went by and wondered what on earth they think of this mess. Hermetically sealed and out of reach. Drifting up there in their own world of peace. There is always hope. During the day, the sound of the A45 is muted. And as the sun comes up, flymos and strimmers are brought out of sheds to puncture the bird song. And as this new normality carries on, we sit back and remember the strangest of times. Here on this table, I wrote a shopping list and then crossed out all the things they didn't have in the co op. I started to look quizzically at unnamed Tupperware in the back of the freezer at something that could be peaches or butternut squash I wondered if Jamie Oliver ever had to put up with this Out there in the garden is where I planted the seeds Well at least we'll have lettuce and potatoes to eat in the summer I said In this shadow I sat under the big tree and thought about all the things I was going to do, all the things I was going to be and on this bench three weeks later I sat in the sun and remembered all the things I still hadn't done. We let the earth breathe again for a fraction of time. There is always hope. And those who dragged us through it, holding together as we fell apart, deserve the dawn of a new age when the importance of their position is recognised with distinction and not to be ignored at the ballot paper and rewarded with something more substantial than a round of applause. There is, there is always hope. There is always hope. There is always hope. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. I cannot believe that Nick has made that in a week. A week. <laughs> um, thank you, Nick. That is absolutely awesome um, and just makes me really proud to be from COV. So thank you. Um, right. OK. Has everyone topped up their drinks? Let us know what you're drinking on the Twitter. What are you drinking? What are you Thing. that's what I'm most interested in um, I feel like I'm a YouTuber um, please tell us what you're drinking um, right um, just a reminder to, um, to you all please keep tweeting and commenting and Facebooking and Instagramming the artists directly um, they're all so brilliant and I can't believe how hard they've worked um, and without an audience directly in front of them it's, 
it's really hard to tell. And um, we know they're doing brilliantly, but it'd be great if you could let them know as well. Um, next up, we have um, Bedside Manor, um, written by Alexandra Johnson, starring Lara West and Louis um, Rolston. This is a rehearsed reading of Alex's play, um, and I directed it, um, which was interesting doing via Zoom. Um, but the guys were great. Um, so this piece imagines the death of a man and has come from Alexandra contemplating the darkest outcome of her father's current fight with coronavirus in hospital. Um, just as a bit of a um, content warning, this piece deals directly with themes related to COVID-19. So here we have Bedside Manor. Hospital bed. Sean is in bed. Oxygen tubes up his nose. He is in isolation. Sean lies listlessly. He's pale, tired and fighting to breathe. His bedside phone rings. Sean manages to answer it. Hello. Sean, I wasn't sure if you'd be awake. Who's this? It's me, Sean. Annie! Annie? But am I hearing you, really? Of course you are. You're not deaf now, are you? Sweetheart, it's been a long time. It has, but we find ourselves in strange times. Where are you? In the corridor outside your room. I can't come in because of the quarantine. Look at your window. See that glamour puss in the hazmat suit waving at you? Sean looks at the window, where a figure in protective gear is waving to him. He waves weakly at them. See? Thought I wouldn't make it, didn't you? I don't I know. I would. I don't know how you could. Well, it's desperate times. 40 years as a sister meant that I had to offer to come back and help out. Are you well? Better than you are. How do you feel? I'm not good, sweetie. It's so tiring just trying to breathe. I've missed you so much. Well, that's why I've made sure I can be here on this ward to see as much of you as I can. I'm really confused. It's the infection and your temperature's not helping. It's just so hard. It won't be for that long. Enjoy the fan. They're like hen's teeth around here. <laughs> it's nice. How are the kids? Fine. They send you lots of positive thoughts. They aren't allowed in to see you. But they miss you. I miss them. I miss you. I'm not being to mass for, I don't know how long for, too long. There's no time in heaven, you'll be forgiven. When will I get out of here? I don't know how long I've been in this bed. It's not gonna be long now, just rest and try to stay calm. I didn't imagine that you would be able to come. I'm a very determined woman. You should know that. After decades of marriage, I suppose I do. I've always admired your toughness, your gentleness and strength. I loved you from the moment I met you. I've always loved you. Even when it looked like I didn't. I've always known that. 
Annie, I'm so tired. Everything sounds so heavy. I just want to close my eyes a bit. Close your eyes. Let your head sink into that lovely pillow. You're tired. It's hard to fight and you're just running out of steam. I want to come with you. It will be fine. Sleep, relax and let yourself breathe slowly. You are loved. It's time. Sean lets the phone drop from his hand. A message slowly slides out of a printer at the hospital mortuary. It reads, mortuary services collection, please. Deceased remains for removal. Collection point, ward 45, bed seven. Name, Sean Callan. Age, 85. Cause of death, COVID-19. Remains to be removed for cremation. Religion, if any, Roman Catholic. Marital status, widower. Next of kin, Louise Haley, number on remains certificate. Remains status, contaminated and infection biohazard. Thank you, Sister MJ Shah, ward manager. Thank you, um, Louis and Lara, that was really beautiful. Um, and thank you also, Alex, um, for writing um, such a poignant piece during this time. Um, I should add that Alex's dad is now out of hospital, which is great news and we wish him all the best. Um, and maybe this is just a time to say thank you to all our amazing key workers um during this um pandemic you guys are awesome okay um next we have got a performance um piece from emily woodruff um so El emily's created us um a film called molding masks um this piece explores autistic masking and social belonging Emily's performance looks at how imagination is often used to fill the gaps in understanding friendships. Um, here's a short video from Emily to tell us a little bit more about the piece. I'm Emily. I've made a short film for you this evening. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my work and myself as an artist first. Um, so I look a lot at this idea of sort of what I call corporeal reality and how our um, bodily configurations shape our sense of self and how it's a kind of balance and a dance between our inner lives and these sort of stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves and how our anatomical configuration sort of buffers against that and against the world around us and how they will perceive us um, and how that all kind of comes together to form a sense of identity, a sense of self and our, our place within the world. Um, so as a part of that, I'm looking a lot at neurodiversity and how experiencing and perceiving and responding to the world in these uh, different ways might also change the way in which we form that sense of identity. Um, so in this project, I've continued to look at the concept of masking, which is essentially any attempt to hide kind of neurodivergent traits. Um, so it might be mimicking more neurotypical behaviour or suppressing what's seen as neurodivergent traits. Um, so as a part of that masking process, what a lot of people will do is they'll script and rehearse and role play and sort of act out scenarios uh, in advance of them 
in order to kind of feel out where their place in that dialogue might be, how they might respond, um, and how they might take part in that conversation. So I've been thinking a lot about how uh, people use imagination to kind of fill those gaps in understanding and fill the gaps between the sort of that dance of the corporeal reality <clears throat> and this inner life and this, these stories that we're telling ourselves at the same time. Um, so we see a figure and they're quite literally masked. Uh, I've used a hot water bottle mask, which I've used in the past. I think there's a, a nice contradiction between sort of the security that the image of the hot water bottle brings against this sort of unease of not being able to immediately connect with the face. Uh, I think maybe that also gives the viewer a bit of a sort of mini experience of what it's like to uh, maybe not have that go-to facial communication that's typical. Um, so we see this figure and they're sort of carefully moulding this imaginary world around them through which they can play out and explore these ideas and their different masks that they've created in order to sort of understand the world around them and rehearse it. Um, but inevitably these worlds are hypotheticals and they morph and melt and they're not rooted in this solid reality of the world that they have to go out into. Um, so we see them sort of trying really hard to hold on to it and maintain these shapes and these characters that they're formed um, as they will often do with their relationships in their life and with their peers going onwards in this sort of ongoing attempt to understand the complexities of human relationships. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I'm going out to eat worms. Long thin slimy ones, short fat fuzzy ones, a gooey gooey ooey ooey worms. The long thin slimy ones slip down your throat and the short fat fuzzy ones stick. When the short fat fuzzy ones stick in your throat they go gooey 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 ooey worms. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I'm going out to eat worms. Long, thin, slimy ones, short, fat, fuzzy ones, a gooey, gooey, ooey, ooey worms. The long, thin, slimy ones slip down your throat and the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick. When the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick in your throat, they go gooey, 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 ooey worms. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I'm going out to eat worms. Long, thin, slimy ones, short, fat, fuzzy ones, a gooey, gooey, ooey, ooey worms. The long, thin, slimy ones slip down your throat and the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick. When the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick in your throat, they go gooey, 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 ooey worms. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I'm going out to eat worms. Long, thin, slimy ones, short, fat, fuzzy ones, a gooey, gooey, ooey, ooey worms. The long, thin, slimy ones slip down your throat and the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick. When the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick in your throat, they go gooey, 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 ooey worms. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I'm going out to eat worms. Long, thin, slimy ones, short, fat, fuzzy ones, a gooey, gooey, ooey, ooey worms. The long, thin, slimy ones slip down your throat and the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick. When the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick in your throat, they go gooey, 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 ooey worms. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I'm going out to eat worms. Long, thin, slimy ones, short, fat, fuzzy ones, a gooey, gooey, ooey, ooey worms. The long, thin, slimy ones slip down your throat and the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick. When the short, fat, fuzzy ones stick in your throat, they go gooey, 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 ooey worms.
Great, that was that was so interesting, Emily. Thank you. Um, brilliant work. Right, next. Oh, I have a reminder in my script. Please keep tweeting us and commenting. Um, that would be great. Let the artists know what you think. Um, your support is so appreciated. Um, next up, we have got Sam Colby with the mighty quest for the Holy Lou role. Um, a binaural theatrical experience. Um, and for those of you who might be isolating by yourselves, um, for, the, for um, the experience to be fully immersive, um, if you can, please do wear a pair of headphones or earphones for the full three-dimensional effect. Um, if you are, if you do happen to be isolating with someone else um, and you can't fight, o fight over the headphones, don't worry, you'll still have the same, um, uh, still have a really good experience. But if you do have for headphones, plug them in now. Um, so a little bit about the piece. Funtime Radio Station releases a weekly radio play, creating all the sound effects live in the studio. In this week's play, mythical creatures have started to roam around the town of Coventry, forcing the brave people to stay inside. However, one man, Dave, is in a crisis. He has run out of loo roll and must take on a perilous quest to find and buy, for a reasonable price, the holy loo roll, foretold to last many, many days. Here is Sam Colby. Good evening, Fun Time Radio listeners. This is your weekly radio play. Now, unfortunately, due to social isolation, I'm the only one allowed in the studio today. I'm Kenneth. I uh, usually just do the wind machine, so you'll have to bear with me. Right, so today's radio play is The Mighty, the Mighty Quest, Quest for the for Holy, Holy Luro. Oh, that's topical. And, oh, we have a very special piece of equipment with us today. Yes, we do. A 3D microphone. So, if you've got headphones at home, be sure to pop them on to get the full experience. Now, without any further ado, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This ballad for the ages begins like most, on a dark and stormy night. Many years ago, in the city of Coventry, mythical creatures began to rise from the ground, causing great mischief in the streets and terrible traffic off the N69. The brave people of the city took to their homes to wait until these creatures had moved on. Our hero Dave and the kitchen. To where his family are gathered around a round table, quietly sipping mead. They spoke thus to his family. A dire time has fallen upon us. My gut is plagued with a painful stress. I look to your eyes and I see that pain reflected. My family, it saddens me greatly to tell you. We are down to our last three sheets. What are we to do? They cried. Fear not, for I have heard word that speaks of hope. In our city lies a store in which one can purchase that we do seek. The Holy Luron. 
if the legend be true, it will last us for many, many, many days. We are saved, they rejoiced. All I require is a purse of coins, or preferably a card of credit, to make the transaction for this most holy relic. Now the grandmother, the oldest and wisest member of the kin, rose to her feet. My dear, do you take this purse of coins and this card of credit and do save us from this dreadful turmoil, love? The grandmother then leaned in close to Dave's ear and whispered, Just this time, don't the dogs. So, at first light, Dave did make haste, leaving the house and began the long, perilous journey. To the market, which was super in many ways. For many miles he did walk through chilly winds, past the road of rings until he arrived at the glass bridge. A trickle of sweat rang down his anxious brow. Surely my noble quest could not be this easy. Now, when he was halfway across the bridge, two trolls sprang out from underneath, blocking all exits. The first small and skinny, the other large and muscular. The smaller troll approached first. Wow, 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 what do we have here? A pesky human thinking he can cross our bridge. The larger troll approached Dave. Pity. He doesn't know he needs to wear the correct headgear to cross and is by common law committing the crime of fashion. A thousand apologies, gentlemen, for I did not know this law, Dave shivered. You see... This is why I've been saying we need to get a bigger sign, so that it's nice and clearly labelled. No, 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 no. Our whole business model is built off tricking people across the bridge, hence the whole jumping out thing. Ah, so what are we to do now, then? Hmm. Well, well, now, now we take his money or we threaten to eat him. My friends, I, I do have a purse of gold with me, they said. But I require it to purchase the holy loo roll, for told to last for many, many days. The trolls did pause at this logic, and again the large troll approached. Pity. We only accept cards of credit here. My friend, I, I do have a card of credit with me, he said, producing the card. <sighs> Yeah, um, I'm kind of hungry, so I'm, I'm going to eat you and take the money anyway. All right, grab him. The smaller troll leapt forward with his long, skinny arms, but Dave jumped out the way, but unbeknownst to him, dropping the card of credit. The larger troll then picked Dave up and threw him off the bridge to his doom. But by some miracle... Dave fell through an open manhole cover, which would make any person say, well, what were the chances of that happening? No, 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 really, what were the chances? And instead of landing on hard ground, he landed in water. For many miles beneath the city did this river twist and turn, until somehow Dave surfaced in the place known as the Pool of Swanswell. A thick fog had filled the air, making it impossible to see. Dave swam to the shore and found that he was horribly lost. Of course, this is the point of any story where the hero is at his weakest. All seems lost, the mighty quest failed. But destiny did take charge, for from the lake submerged a hand. The hand did say, Oh, most holy hand, I do beg you to help me in my quest. 
I'm not a hand, you idiot. I'm the lady of the pool of swans. My lady, I can only see your hand. Why is this? Yeah. It's really deep in here. Anyway. Dave, I do sense that you are pure in heart. And I will show you to your journey's end. And with that, the hand did point through the fog to a small pathway. A thousand blessings upon you, Dave proclaimed as he walked on. And then, through the fog, he saw it. The holy supermarket. Dave picked up a trolley and made his way down the aisles. First, fearing the wrath of his grandmother, the biscuit aisle to pick up those biscuits. Then, to the ho most holy aisle, the aisle which held that he did seek most. The toiletries. Then he saw it. The thing of wonder, beauty and triple ply. The holy loo roll. I cannot believe my eyes, Dave said, as he made his way to the checkout, to where the cashier did bravely stand, Dave stand charge of his door, stated the price. Yeah, that'll be, uh, 325, please. Dave took a sharp intake of breath and handed over his purse of coins. Yeah, the store manager said. You see, we're we're not accepting that cash at the moment. Store policy. We're we're moving to um, contactless instead. Dave paused and checked his pockets. I must have dropped it. Oh, I've lost contact with my card. The mighty quest. Oh, free sheets. Hello everyone, well done Sam, that was flipping awesome, <laughs> made me laugh a lot. Okay, this is the final little bit from me, um, because up next we have Rosso, um, our final act of the evening. Before we um, disappear, um, there's just a couple of things um, I'd like to say. Um, first of all, we'd love to thank um, our partners, um, Coventry City of Culture Trust and the Belgrade Theatre for helping us make this happen. Um, we wouldn't have been able to do it without you. And also Ludic Rooms, especially Don Bradmore um, and Coventry Art Space and Mindy Chillery. Paul and I thought up this idea about three weeks ago. Um, and then artists had only a week to apply and then a week to make their work. So it's been pretty rapid to say the least. Um, and everyone's pulled together so much and we're just like so grateful um, for their support in helping make this happen. Speaking of Paul, he hasn't featured much this evening because he is um, locked away in his bedroom pressing many buttons um, and <laughs> twiddling lots of different, uh, I was going to say uh, knobs, but yes, that, that as well, um, because he um, has somehow made this live scratch night come together via Zoom and other processing devices that I can't even name. So huge shout out to Paul for making this happen. Um, it's been a mammoth task but he has stepped up to the challenge. So, right, just to let you know, this video will remain on our YouTube channel, so please do share. And on Friday, we'll be releasing an access performance of the evening um, with BSL interpretation and um, captioning as well. So we'll, we'll put that in all our channels um, on social media, Facebook, um, and uh, yeah, so there'll be an access performance um, supported by Coventry 2021, which will be released on Friday. Um, don't forget, you can still donate if you'd like to. We're going to put the um, link um, in the chat um, 
and uh, on our uh, Facebook and Twitter pages as well. We're a not-for-profit organization. We don't receive any core funding and um, we're reliant on um, project grants. So if you do have a bit of spare change, we greatly appreciate it and it will go into our next project. Um, and finally, um, if you haven't had enough of live streaming this evening, um, you can head over to um, Wes, Wes Finch's um, music page um, because he will be streaming a light. Well, he's probably just started now, actually. We're running a little bit over, but he's just started streaming a gig. So if you want to check out some more fabulous talent from Cov, head over to Wes Finch's page um, and check him out. Okay, without further ado, our final act of this evening is Rosso. Rosso are a Coventry-based Americana folk and country duo featuring guitarist Emily Eglinton and vocalist Fiona Laycock. Also, I can confirm that the, these two ladies live together. We haven't broken any social distancing rules before I start getting tweets. Um, they, they live together um, and they're isolating together, so it's fine that they're performing together. Um, so meeting for the first time as music students, this combination of great guitar chops and tasty vox, as described by Newton Faulkner, has been developed over the past year to craft their sound. It is assured, bold, energetic yet heartfelt so our final act of tonight for shutdown but scratching is rosso Thank you uh, for joining us. Thank you for watching through to the end of the live stream to see us. Um, we are so grateful to be here. Um, luckily, we live together, so um, we feel so blessed that we're still able to perform together on live streams like this um, for you at home. So we're going to do three original songs for you um, this evening, and hopefully they will lift your spirits a bit in this um, kind of weird season. Um, this first song is called Landing Light. It's a song that we um, released uh, last year, and it's available on all streaming platforms. So if you like it, go and find it. Um, but yeah, it's a sweet little song, and uh, we love it. And yeah, hopefully you will enjoy it, and uh, have your spirits with me. You taught me to be patient, you taught me to be kind. You told me if I do these things, I'll keep my peace of mind. But I don't always get it right, in fact, I get it wrong most of the time. You taught me to be gracious, you taught me to be wise. You taught me to be cautious of the world and all its lies, but I don't always get it right. In fact, I get it wrong most of the time. But when I come running home, somehow I know that it's all gonna be alright. Because I see your silhouette, you still there waiting for me. You told me about forgiveness and how to right my wrongs But sometimes I forget, so I put it in this song Still I don't always get it right In fact, I get it wrong most of the time But when I come running home Somehow I know that it's all gonna be all right Cause I see your silhouette You stood there waiting for me In the landing light 
get it right. In fact, I get it wrong most of the time. You know I'm trying. Yes, I'm trying. Hell, I'm trying just to make it through the night. But when I come running home, somehow I know that it's all gonna be all right. Cause I see you still away. You still waiting, waiting for me in the ending line. Cause I see your silhouette You sit there waiting for me in the landing light Because I see your silhouette You sit there waiting for me in the landing light Thank you. So, we say thank you, we have to just assume you yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, so we're performing without noise. <laughs> so, weird. so our next song um, it's called Found and it was written um, a couple of months ago when my guitar was actually stolen and we did a gig um, and the car was smashed into and someone nicked it um, but there was a great kind of victory story in it because within 24 hours I had it back someone called me and was like hey so I bought a guitar at the pub last night for 40 quid um, do you want it back? And I was like, yes, please. And amazingly, I got it back. So we decided to make the best out of that situation and, and write a song about that victory and about that joy that, you know, my guitar returned. Because that doesn't, that doesn't happen very often no. <laughs> at all. So this is found. Stolen the night, how can I see the maker's bite? Shattered and torn with everything gone, strain was the song of hope to sing. Coldest of nights, too bitter to bear, all I could do was to sit. Instead, the godless in heart would make us all sound as play filled we are in the darkest of hours. As the night sees, so did the strife, the lost of return and give a new night. Searching and waiting, we took back the ground. Entering in our gentle loft, we go down. Night became day with joy in the morning. Some of my heart was yet to be born. Daylight he came to return what was mine. Hunger and high he was walking the night. As the night sees, so the strife, the last of it took to give a new life. Searching away to return the crown. Entering a cause that's the last we can Searching and waiting, we took back the crown. Victory is as is the last become found. Searching and waiting, we took back the crown. Victory is as is the last become found. Searching and waiting, we took back the crown. Victory is as is the last become found. Searching and waiting, we took back the crown. Victory is as is the last become found. Searching and waiting, we took part of the ground. Victory is as is the last of the ground. Searching and waiting, we took part of the ground. Victory is as is the last of the ground. Nice. So this is our last song, um, the last part of the evening, I suppose, for you. So um, for this song, we decided. Um, well, I suppose for this live stream, I should say, we decided to um, set ourselves a challenge 
um, and create some new material. Um, and so we decided we work well to deadlines, so let's write a new song. Um, and around the theme of Imagine, um, to keep in, in theme with the, with the live stream, I can say theme as many times as I can. <laughs> and um, so we started writing this song yesterday yep. and um, we finished it a couple of hours ago. So it's really rough and ready. It's totally brand new, nobody else has heard it. So you're the first people yeah, to hear it. First people, yeah, it's like you said, it's about the theme Imagine and it's kind of like, um, Imagine if we chose to like sing joy instead of focus on the darkness and to bring the light into situations like we're in at the minute and just choose to, to sing and have fun and find the joy in it. Um, so I hope you enjoy. I suppose this is called Imagine. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. So <laughs> Thanks. growing weak I'll remember the truth you speak in days of old once strong and bold when my heart is growing weak when the wolves are at my door I will sing and dance the more I won't lose sight his one is when the wolves are at my door I will walk fast to the bed In time to try and tell the wolves to wait a while. Darkness and fear don't belong here. Imagine we sing in time to try. When the wolves are closing in, I'll return where I begin. With arms flung wide and selfish pride When the walls are closing in When my mind is swayed by lies I will choose to fix my eyes Won't crumble there when I take the ground When my mind is swayed by lies I will go fast to the maker's high Imagine we stay in time to try and tell the wolves to wait a while. Darkness and fear don't belong here. Imagine we sing in time to try. Imagine we trust with all our hearts. Know that the joy will not divide. Waking our souls, help us to know. Imagine we trust with all our hearts. To the maker's time, I will not cease to tell of who you are. I may be lost, but I'm never too far. So I will go fast to the maker's time. do we sing? Thank you. Thank you to everyone that's been watching the live stream. Um, and thank you. Big shout out to sh the Shooting Festival for having us on tonight. It's been so good. It's been so good. Follow us, Rosso Duo, on all of our social medias. And thank you again so much for watching. See you.